welcome back to my channel my name is Nadja if you are new here I just want to say welcome 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 make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel make sure that you check or click the bell so that you notified every time I upload a video okay guys so today is definitely going to be one that's going to hit some people the wrong way all right because even myself was unaware of you know the whole background of tattoos okay because I have several tattoos now I will say that I got most of my tattoos when I was in my younger years I'm 43 years old so when I received most of my tattoos I was still in my early 20s or as a teenager okay so when I was in the new age I received or not didn't receive but I got a tattoo on my wrist this is not what the tattoo was okay i had gotten a tattoo that was basically a lotus flower it had different symbols that represented buddhism buddhism and spiritual awakening um whole new age thought process okay so when i got delivered i just said to myself there's no way that i can continue on looking at this tattoo every day being reminded of where I was, you know, mentally and spiritually at that time. And I had gotten the tattoo at um, on November 11th so that I made sure it was 11-11 and it was all types of retrograde, this and that. And I wanted to just completely forget what was there before, okay? So when I got delivered, that was the first thing I did was went back to the tattoo artist and had them completely cover it with this rose. All right. So that's the only reason why I have this big old rose tattoo here on my arm. All right. Um, the other tattoo was very simple and very dainty. And I had to get something that was big enough and with color in order to cover it. So it wasn't until recently that the more that I have dived into um, doing deliverances and um, just that whole world of what is attached to um, satanic and demonic things or what is attached to anything that's anti-God, the more information that I'm gaining, the more details that I'm getting. And so as I get that information, I feel that as an evangelist, okay, I am, for those of you who are new here, I am an ordained evangelist. I made an oath, okay? I made an oath in front of the people and to God that my life would be devoted to teaching the things of God, to teaching the truth, to uh, do as much as possible to draw more people closer to Christ, right? So it is my duty to continue to do that no matter who it offends all right because there's going to be people who aren't going to agree i mean that's a given not everyone is a child of god or desires to be okay that's the reality but that's not going to stop me from trying that's not going to stop me from sharing the things that are being brought to my attention and so this particular uh study of information that I'm going to give to you today. I'm not going to take the credit for all of the, the information, okay? Because um, my cousin, Bishop Zimmerman, for those of you who may have um, met him on the mass deliverance, and some of you may have also met him if you had, if you've had a one-on-one -on -one deliverance, um, he typically is in some of the rooms. But this is a, this is pretty much something he put on his blog back in 2019 guys if you hear talking i have psalm 91 playing on my television let me turn that down so that i don't feel like i'm talking over someone all right okay so he created this um and it's been on his blog i don't know how many people have actually had the opportunity to take a look at this information um but i'm going to make sure that 
as many as necessary gains the details that are needed in reference to why tattoos are not of God, okay? And why and how they are very much connected to satanic practices, all right? So if you see me um, looking off to my left, I am on my Mac here looking at notes and details here that I'm gonna share with you today, okay? So one of the most common satanic practices, okay, is cutting of the flesh. For those of you who do not know, that is one of the common satanic practices is cutting of the flesh. And it's also called bloodletting, L-E-T-T-I-N-G, bloodletting. The term bloodletting originates from the word let, okay? And that's to allow to pass or to come. So hence bloodletting literally means to allow the blood to come or pass, okay? Allowing the blood to come to the surface and bleed out, all right? Throughout history, the cutting of the flesh and bloodletting are rituals that are performed to unleash demonic supernatural powers, okay? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood, all right? That's Leviticus 17:11. The blood is highly valued in the occult as the power source and by releasing blood or by releasing the letting of the blood, which is the power source to them, then supernatural powers are unleashed. The dictionary of cults, sex, sex, S E C T S religions and the occult, rights of the power of the blood and its connection to sat Satanism and the occult. All right, blood, okay, occult and Satanism. The vitalizing or life-giving agent used in the sacrament of black mass, blood is believed to provide power and life, okay? Therefore, plays a central part in ritualistic practices. Now that little excerpt or insert was written by George A. Mather and Larry A. Nichols from the Dictionary of Cults, Sex, Religions, and the Occult. That's a book, okay? Now the, en the Encyclopedia of Witches and Witchcraft. Yes, there is an Encyclopedia of Witches and Witchcraft. They said... Of the bloodletting ritual, blood that is let is believed to unleash power. By the way, some modern tattoo artists perform rituals during their tattoo procedure in order to unleash supernatural power. Some even lick the flowing blood bubbling from the tattoo. Oh my gosh. Blood, called the river of life, Blood is identified with the soul and is the vehicle that carries the vital energy of the universe through the, through the body. In magic, blood is revered and feared for the miraculous power it possesses and confers. Blood that is let is believed to unleash power. Of course, you can just tell by the verbiage of that sentence, which of course, this is from the Encyclopedia of Witches and witchcraft, you can just tell by the verbiage, okay? The vital energy of the universe, all right? And discussing magic. These are new age and witchcraft terms, all right? Now this was written by Gully Rosemary Ellen, all right? In the second edition of the Encyclopedia of Witches and Witchcraft. Now, let's go into what the word says about cutting of flesh and blood, right? The word of God, in 1st King 18 gives a detailed and perverse example of bloodletting by Satanists aka prophets of Baal which are the same thing attempting to unleash supernatural power and ignite the fire for the sacrifice 
Now, 1 King 18, verse 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first. For ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. Verse 26. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon the altar which was made verse 27 and it came to pass at noon that elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked verse 28 and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Now you guys can go read this for yourself now. Okay, this started at 1 King 18, verse 25 through 28. Now notice how in 1 Kings uh, 18, 28, it describes this devil worshiping self mutilation blood release act after their manner okay now in other words this bloodletting was common practice among the prophets of the devil okay we do know that bloodletting was a familiar ritual among the prophets of Baal so this is something that they did regularly back in biblical times when they were following a false gods in order to offer sacrifice to these false gods it's also evident from other scriptures that cutting of the flesh or bloodletting was common practice among pagans um, wicked nations which i just mentioned all right now in leviticus 2 21 5 and deuteronomy 14 1 the lord condemns such demonic practices in verse 5 they shall not make baldness upon their head neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard nor make any cuttings in their flesh they shall, verse 6, they shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. Now, Leviticus 21, 5 through 6, ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between eyes for the dead between your eyes for the dead right so the prophets of Baal back in those days used to definitely um, do rituals that required them to cut their hair okay as an offering to these false gods as well as to um, offer them to the dead all right there are many cultures that even still do this today like the Yorubas that I just spoke about in the waste beads video where their, the cutting and shaving of their head and offering it to the deity okay so guys this is extremely demonic now I'm gonna go into more detail in reference to Deuteronomy 14 starting at verse 1 because this is talking about bloodletting and demon possession in the Word of God um, first mark chapter 5 also contains the familiar account of the devil possessed man of Kadera Notice in verse 5, among the demonic acts and a telltale sign of possession, cutting himself with stones. All right, so I'm going to start with verse 1 from Deuteronomy 4. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 14. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of Kadernes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, 
Jesus, thou son of most high God. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So basically he didn't, he was calling out, not wanting to receive judgment for what he had done because the father was, was there in present for he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion for we are many. So guys, I'm sure you've heard those last two verses before, okay, about the demon possessed man and God act and Jesus asking him, what is your name? And him saying lesion for we are many. That's an unclean spirit. That is a demonic spirit or spirits that are living within this person that is causing the man to cut himself. Okay. Causing the man to be always day and night in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself. So that to me says that he was, you see a lot of people want to go in the mountains, going to the tombs, into the, the dead, where the dead uh, rest, as well as crying, representing depression and him cutting himself. Those are demonic influences okay the spirit of depression the spirit of suicide these are demonic um, unclean spirits that cause this man to cut himself now before I go on I want to bring up the fact about Megan Fox and her boyfriend machine gun Kelly after reading this I want you to understand that for those of you who did not see the interview that she just recently did where she is talking about you know her and machine gun kelly that they drink droplets of each other's blood for ritual purposes okay so they went off to another country somewhere in order to partake in certain spiritual practices spiritual rituals okay that opened them up to demonic entities open up their spirit so they went thinking that by doing these things that it was pretty much going to cleanse them remove any negative things that were there but in turn it does the opposite whenever you're seeking spiritual um when you're sp seeking spiritual oneness outside of the holy spirit and you're performing different rituals you're opening yourself up to demonic entities all right you're not opening yourself up to anything that is going to clean you of negativity. You're inviting it in. And so um, it's very obvious that hearing her story that after they came back from this trip, that the basically the more demonic they became. So now they look at it as being something that is okay. This person, Megan Fox, was a Christian. But when she connected with Machine Gun Kelly, all of a sudden, now everything she talks about is very new age and satanic. So now they are, you know, cutting themselves and drinking each other's blood. She has even admitted that on more than one occasion that he has sliced open his chest and, and said, you know, take my soul. If that isn't demonic based on everything that I've just read already and I'm not even done this lets you know the spirits that are operating through them that would even push them to do this them drinking one another's blood and them doing these rituals because she said it's for ritual purposes they're offering this blood to the demons that they are in submission to they're offering offering this blood as as sacrifices all right. So we have to be very careful with the things that we adopt and the things that we allow in. Because once you open the door, you may open the door to something that's so much. Um, you may open the door to something that's that's extremely considered as innocent in the beginning. But the more you open yourself up to it, the more influence the devil is going to bring to you. That's just going to string you along one little bit at a time until you don't even realize that you've let a demon in through one small thing 
then that demon that you let in is now going to influence you to take another step towards something else that will let, allow more demons in. And then before you know it, the decisions that you're making, okay, are not led by you. The decisions that you're making are not logical, biblical, God, Holy Spirit driven decisions. They are decisions made by the demonic entities that you are oppressed by because of the doors that you've opened. That's the danger of doing these things. So let me move on. Mark 5 verse 1 through 9. It's also interesting that this cutting himself with stones was associated with the man possessed. Not with one, but legions or many devils. Luke describes the same account, all right, as a certain man which had devils for a long time. And it says, and when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abide in any house but in the tombs. Luke 8, 27, the morbid practice of cutting oneself and bloodletting has a long and dark history in the demonic pages of Satanism, demonism, and the occult. Under the definition of Satanism, guys, the highly acclaimed Encyclopedia of American Religions list among the activities performed by Satanists is bloodletting. So these are like, you know, these are sources, like these are real sources, okay? Encyclopedia of American Religions lists among the activities performed by Satanists is bloodletting. All right? So we're going to start little by little going into more detail about how tattoos fits into bloodletting. All right? In this branch of Satanism, one can expect to find those individuals engaged in grave robbery, sexual assaults, and the ritual bloodletting. And that's Melton Gordon, Encyclopedia of American Religions, third edition, okay, Gale Research, in case you want to go and get the references yourself. An article in the independent newspaper acknowledges the pathway from bloodletting to Satanism found on websites aimed toward children. Now, the Association of Teachers and Lectures said the popularity of children's programs and books featured witchcraft could encourage children to research for sinister material on the Internet. And, and that's exactly what is currently happening as we speak. Researchers for the Union found websites promoting Satanism, bloodletting, and Wicca, which is witchcraft. One website found by the union describes in details how to carry out bloodletting and blood drinking. Yes, this is these are the times that we're living in. In 1996, a satanic Kentucky vampire cult <laughs> led by the self-proclaimed 500-year vampire and Satanist. These are real organizations, guys. Teenager Rod Farrell brutally murdered two people. Farrell began his dark journey of blood, Satanism, vampirism, and murder by walking around cemeteries at night, cutting himself, and practicing bloodletting. So the reason we're talking about all of this stuff is to, com is, is to compartmentalize or to, to put together um, bloodletting, letting you know what is considered bloodletting, and to show you how tattooing is connected to that. Now, tattoos, a trail of bloodletting. There's no question, okay, that tattoos originated from the satanic ritual of bloodletting and cutting and cutting of the flesh as described in 1 Kings 18. Now, in fact, in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28, where the Lord clearly condemns the tattoo, ye shall not make any print, any marks upon you. This is scriptural. Ye shall not make any print any marks upon you. Notice what else is included in the same verse. Obviously, by the context, the Lord connects the forbidden marks or tattoo. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19, 28. It cannot get more clearer than that, guys. Okay? Now... 
Now, as far as tattoos and the blood flows, what that represents, perhaps it would be a good time to give a few brief descriptions of the tattoo procedure. May I remind you again, these are all from pro tattoo resources. So now I'm going to go ahead and just give you a little bit of information about the procedure or the description of the tattoo procedure and to understand that this information is given by pro tattoo resources. Okay. People who are pro tattoos, they're not against tattoos. They're just giving you the, the history and the details of that. Okay. Early people cut open their skin and rubbed soot. Okay. Soot is like the, um, ash from burning wood okay that's soot or um from a fire soot flies in the air from things that become burned so they would cut open their skin and rub soot into the wounds to mark themselves they punctured their skin with the bones and teeth of animals all right now this was published in um the body art book which is a complete illustration guide to tattoos piercings and other body modifications now you'll see little uh, drops of blood emerge from the flesh um, where the tattoo has been um, started. Now how much you bleed has a lot to do with your personal physiology, all right? As well as outside factors as if, um, such as if you drink alcohol and there's alcohol in your bloodstream, then that can make you bleed more, okay? You're gonna bleed like a stuck pig. <laughs> So usually your blood will coagulate, okay, within a uh, within a matter of minutes, and so the clotting up the tiny punctures that have been made, the blood will start to clot up. So all of that stuff depends on the person's body, you know, your physical um, makeup, and what's in your system, okay. So some people may say, oh, I got a tattoo and I didn't really bleed that much. So that doesn't, you know, I don't fall into that category, which has nothing to do with how much you bleed. Now, when your tattoo is finished, the, art, the artist is going to clean up the tattoo with alcohol and a water solution. And once that dries, a little blood bubbles have ceased rising to the surface. The artist may want to snap a few photos of your piece. That is, that is true. Based on me being someone who has tattoos that is the procedure now the tattooist guides the tattoo machine over the skin he or she stops the needle every minute or so to wipe the blood and ink to clean it off of the the area that they are tattooing the amounts of bleeding and pain in tattoo process differ according to each person now after the first two hours you're supposed to remove the bandage and wash away any collected or dried blood. Now this information has been given by Bonnie B. Graves from Tattooing and Body Piercing. So they're just giving the details on um, what you go through if you're getting a tattoo. The reasons why puncturing the skin should be regarded with some degree of awe are not far to seek. For in the first place, there is the drawing of blood which to the savage world over is full of significance as a rejuvenating and immortalizing factor. There is in addition, the opening of numerous inlets, inlets for evil to enter, which is inlets, just like outlets inlets is there is, there is opportunity for evil to enter. Okay. Now this information was written by the history of tattooing and its significance, all right, by Gilbert Steve, Tattoo History. Okay, this, these are all books that I'm getting this information from, okay? Rolling Stone Magazine gives a first-hand description of the bloodletting tattoo procedure. Okay, so what you have to be, be aware of is the, the tattoo procedure is a fashion of the satanic practice of bloodletting or cutting of one's flesh. Rubbing a little ink or pigment in it doesn't change the fact that you are cutting your flesh. You are practicing bloodletting. Now, you don't have to take our word for it. Here is what the pro tattoo historians have written. 
By far the most extensive work ever published on tattoos was by Dr. W.D. Hambly's The History of Tattooing and Its Significance. Author Steve Gilbert in his popular tattoo history, a source book writes, Hambly concluded that historically tattooing had originated in connection with the ancient rites of scar scarification and bloodletting which were associated with religious practices intended to put the human soul in harmony with supernatural forces and ensure continuity between this life and the next. Wow. So again, guys, this is this is information from pro tattoo historians who know exactly the truth about what tattooing is. It's not just an art. It's not just I think this is pretty. Let me put this on my body so I can, you know, feel like my body is now a canvas. You're practicing bloodletting. Now, did you also notice that in the quote above? That Hamley also concluded that tattoos were associated with religious practices? Hmm. Now I wonder what kind of religious practices would practice bloodletting. Hint. This is a hint, okay? If you forgot, go back to read 1 Kings 18. Which clearly discusses those who uh, worship Baal. And practice pagan wickedness. I mean, it's right here. There's no doubt that cutting and marking of one's skin is connected to and associated with satanic and demonic practice of bloodletting. Uh, now, author Gilbert again links the tattoo to bloodletting and magic. And even gives an enlightening and frightening description of a modern day bloodletting, blood licking Satan, satanic tattoo procedure. Notice the connection to the demonic spiritual manifestations. Northwest um, Alaska traditional practices among shamans commonly perform bloodletting to relieve uh, aching or inflamed parts of the body. All right, so Nelson watched a shaman lacing the scalp of his little girl's head, the long thin iron point of the instrument being thrust 12 to 15 inches between the scalp and skull which is the identical technique for tattooing it is plausible that the release of blood functioned to appease various ills and spiritual manifestations for instance <laughs> several saint lawrence islanders explained to me the importance of licking the blood that was released during tattoo operations guys you can't make this stuff up all right. Now, may I again remind you, all this information and documentation are from published books that are promoting and glorifying tattoos. These are not from people who um, go against the idea of tattoos. These are not Christian authors that are writing this information uh, with anti-tattoo slants. They aren't. So, you know, this is hard documented facts. It's hard documented facts from tattoo artists themselves. Now you can try and justify and close your eyes to the documented facts if you want to. But the fact is tattoos are clearly connected to satanic um, bloodletting. Um, you know, there's a multitude of different resources that are provided here. Again, from people who are not Christians, but those who actually believe in tattooing. In 1st King 18 28 and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them this is exactly what we just read mark 5 6 and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones lastly 2nd Corinthians 2 11 lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. So guys, now that you have this information, the question is, what are you going to do with the information? Are you still going to justify what we have already uh, presented here? The information from all of these, you know, books of facts regarding what tattooing is? 
Or are you going to um, do exactly what God has called you to do, which is to live an obedient life? Living an obedient life is when you are, when he brings something to your attention, you listen, you hear, and you obey. We do not make excuses for why it's not that serious when it's in the word of God. If it's in the word of God and you do the opposite, then you are the spirit of rebellion. Okay. And what is rebellion? Rebellion is the spirit of witchcraft. So guys, it's important right now that as certain things are brought to your knowledge and you become more wise about what the word of God says and what God's expectations are of us, that we follow them. This is in no way or in no form of judgment because I have tattoos. But once those tattoos have been gotten, clearly, you know, what's done is done. At this point, what we need to do is renounce. We need to renounce our association with bloodletting, renouncing our association with uh, getting tattoos, repenting for going against God's word, asking for the Holy Spirit to cleanse our bodies and the tattoos. Cleanse it. Cleanse it with your Holy Ghost fire. Purify it. Okay, guys. So definitely share this video. Because I know there's a lot of Christians, a lot of lukewarm Christians. They're in fraternities. They're in sororities. They're being branded. They're getting tattoos. But they still don't really know God. They don't understand who he is because they don't read their word. They don't study to show approved. All right, guys. I'm going to end here. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.